of war. You are now listening to tales of Okudili Mbafo on Okuo. The white man called a meeting. Okudili left his house very early and got there first. The white man on seeing him sent his boy to give him some refreshments. Okudili, who had never tasted the white man's drink, had a splendid time drinking before the meeting began. To Okudili's surprise, present at the meeting was the chief speaker of the king's cabinet from Nkwong's village, the owner of Arakufe village, and the woman who he had never seen before. Okudili had thought the meeting was just between him and the white man. Seeing these people here was the bad news. While the white man laid out agenda for the meeting, Okudili took stock and began to access the body language of everyone present. He noticed that the chief speaker, who had introduced himself as Naji, came carrying a bulky document. Onowu Madubilo from Anakufe came with the king's stamp. The woman who neither of them knew was empty-handed. Okudili had come with empty bags in the hopes of carrying his carries away as earlier agreed between him and the white man. In the course of the meeting, Okudili realized that the white man had also been having meetings with the people of Nkwawu and Anakufe. In anger and betrayal, Okudili stood up to leave, calling the white man all sorts of names. The woman who until then had not spoken a word stood up and gave Okudili a slap. She pushed him back to his seat and gave him a sign to keep his mouth shut. She also gave a warning finger to the rest of the men at the meeting. Her presence at the meeting then became clear to them. She was the white man's henchman. Okudili's plan was after beating the people of Nkwawu in the battle and taking the land, he would sell it to the white man and live a life of wealth. The white man instead had convinced the people of Nkwawu and Anakufe to work on the land in exchange for money and other amenities. The white man named the land Obodanyao and demarcated it into three parts for each of the villages to work on. Naji, the chief speaker, handed over the documents in his possession to the white man. It contained the blessings of the king. Ono Umadubuilo, using his king's stamp, signed on the dotted lines given to him by the white man. Okudili had nothing to give or sign with because he had told no one of his plans and his king was not aware of any of this. The white man gave him three market days to bring his king up to speed or risk the wrath of the white man on a body. Okudili left the meeting a broken and defeated man. How would he explain to his king and to his people that in his greed he had made them subjects and slaves to the white man? He got home and his problems only intensified when he was told that Nena and the children had been taken away.